What's up, YouTube? I just posted a tutorial on lighting with a Grayscale Gorilla, and I realized some people commented on my YouTube channel. We don't have anyone talking about how I actually set up the lights. So today we're going to just do that really quick, give you a, an explanation on how to set up three-point lighting in Unreal. So uh, I am just going to hit Control D on this level, this main level that I'm doing most of my work in here. We don't need to open other stuff. There's a little error down there. So I hit Control D and we'll call this lighting tut. Cool. And then we'll just double click on that. And uh, I'm just going to give you like a quick walkthrough on like what you would do if you uh, were trying to duplicate a level. This is kind of dirtying an Unreal project as in we're doing things a little quick and dirty. So we'll take one of these thumbnails. And if I double click on this level sequence here, if you go to the back previous tutorial, uh, all this stuff will work, but when I double click on this, everything's red and unhappy. The reason why is because this content inside this level sequence is looking for a reference inside the level. It currently references content in our main level that we just did. So if you ever have something like this where you're trying to create multiple levels in a project, what you want to do is go into uh, your thumbnail level sequence and uh, we'll go to the one that we uh, just opened, which is this one. We're actually going to duplicate it and we will duplicate it and then uh, one underscore tut. Just make a separate one so we don't mess up the first level and then we're going to go to the little wrench here and go to advance and fix actor actor references and once we do that hey look it's fixed ready to go awesome now we are currently in this tut level so i am not worried about deleting any of the lights so we're just going to delete all the lights have a completely black empty scene now, before you do anything else, please, for the love of God, go to your selection mode, type in post-process volume, drag one of these into your scene, and you should have a post-process volume. I already have one in my scene in my settings for most of my projects, as I will go into the exposure mode down here and make sure that my auto exposure basic is set, exposure compensation to one, that's a starting point, depending on your project, it may change, uh, and then you set your min and max to one as well. And the reason why you do that is it make sure that the only thing that's being exposed is going to be the lights, whatever's lit by our lights, not our camera trying to auto correct exposure. So from here now, we're going to go into my uh, selection mode. Los Angeles, do you mind? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so go into my lights and we're going to find an HDRI backdrop. And hey, look, we have our character kind of just standing there. Right click WASD. We will basically take this HDRI backdrop and center it up in our world. Hit the W key. Where's my gizmo? There it is. And then just scooch it down. Now, uh, this lighting looks pretty gross, overcast, bland, not very exciting, etc. First thing I will do is I'll take this HDRI and put it into this folder. If you don't have a folder, just click this button up here. Now, uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and change our HDRI to something that looks a little bit more flattering for studio lighting. So I'm going to go to my HDRI folder that I have, and I have a bunch of other HDRIs from Grayscale Gorilla. It does need to be a texture cube. We'll just take this modern atrium and uh, drop it in. And now we have this sort of like environment that's lighting our scene, but it's not as exciting as what you saw in the other tutorial and what I have in the other level. We need some actual lights for our project. So the first thing is first, we're going to hit control shift S to save our project. We're going to go into our light under our selection mode, place actors panel, and we're first going to add a rectangular light. And I'm going to have this light be camera right. If my camera, if I hit the G key is going to be right there, I want this to the right of my camera. So I am going to pull this over, hit the E to go to my rotation, and then uh, kind of bring this up and around like so. Now I can hit Control tilde to change my axis. So we are working with uh, either the world axis, which is this one, or we can hit Control tilde and go with the local axis. So if we want to bring our light closer, exactly where the light is pointing, we can do that as well. And I'll kind of just like fuss around with this. 
Now to double check, what I can do is go to my sequencer and I can select this locked viewport or I can just hit shift C on my keyboard with my viewport selected and that's looking a lot better already than if we just go ahead and turn off this rectangular light. It's kind of flat, kind of gross, kind of boring, etc. Now, one thing you can do is with lighting, it's always a push and pull experience. So we'll first take this rectangular light, put it in the folder. And then what I will do when I'm typically on set shooting photos for um, ads or something is I will try and use strobes and have as little outside light as possible. So you could actually just light this without an HDRI. And if we set the HDRI backdrop value to zero, we get this like really dark, obviously it's a dark room, but we, but we get this really contrasty look. If we want a little bit of fill, we could either have more lights or we can use our HDRI backdrop to add just like a touch of extra fill in our shadows. This is really up to you and the look that you're going for. Lighting is kind of interesting like that. It's whatever you want. It's subjective unless your client says otherwise. So now we have our first light and what I will always do is I will uh, hit F2 on the keyboard with my light selected to rename it and I'll type light underscore key. This is my key light, the, the first light. Then with this key light, I will hit control D on the keyboard. I will hit F2. Uh, right arrow to uh, go to the end backspace and then we'll call this one fill and then from here I'm gonna go to my gizmo the W key to access my transform gizmo and uh, push this over to camera left and then I'm going to just rotate this in place control tilde to change my axis and then control tilde to bring this down. Now, if I go ahead and hit shift C, it's gonna look really flat now because this fill light is the same exact exposure or brightness intensity as our key light. So in general, a fill light will be a little bit less uh, intense than the key light. So maybe I'll set this to a value of two and that's already looking a little bit nicer uh, because I get a little bit of shadow there, but it's not straight up uh, even lighting across the board. I can even set this to like one and uh, make this look uh, a little bit more, slightly more dramatic. Now from here, I'm gonna add one more light for our three point lighting setup. So I'll hit control D and I will hit F2 and rename this rim. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is take this rim light and put it just at the edge of our character. So I'm going to point this up and down and around and have it over there. Now a rim light, the, the smaller the light source, the harsher the shadows are gonna be, but if you want that like nice rim highlight, that like really intense hair light, it'll typically be pretty small. So we'll go to the source width and height and set this to like 20 and 20. And then I can also go to my barn doors. And if I change the angle, we can have it be a little bit more directional. So if I hit shift C, select my viewport, hit shift C, let's go back to my rim light and we can see what that's doing on our hair and it's adding a little bit more dimension I can increase that intensity and now it looks like doo-doo butt but uh, it is uh, still uh, we can see what it's affecting so I will do is I will hit shift C again leave my light hit the control tilde key and bring this back in Z space so we're really just trying to catch that uh, that hair light like so so we can just check that and that's looking just a little, yeah, we're getting that rim there, but still really intense. So I'll set this to like a value of two, just so that it's a little, helping us create that like foreground background se separation for our character. So from here with the three point lighting setup, this is where you would push and pull and really go for the look that you're going, that you, that you wanted, whatever your client says, whatever you need for your project, etc. So if I wanted something more colorful, let's say I would keep my key light and I wanted something to be a little bit more warm. You could either go to your light color and you can set 
the color to like I don't know some like purple and you get this this cool effect or you could very well go to your temperature and this is something I like to do and I will uh, y use this as my my way to add warmth or coolness into my image so a lower number is going to be a little bit more warm and then a higher number is going to be a little bit more cool if you're familiar with that like orange and teal look this is a, a good way to like try and start experimenting with that but again this is also something you could edit in in post and do some uh, color correction etc color grading whatever whatever you like to do now when it comes to lighting in unreal i will do one more thing to really help level up the the lighting and the shadows and it doesn't always work i should also mention i'm on unreal engine 5.4 so this may be different for you but i will select all of my lights and in the details panel and the search bar i will type ray and i will find the cast ray trace shadows and by default in the project settings it might may be disabled in your project but in this one it is so i would just turn on ray tracing and that may give us slightly different shadows i don't want to say they're better Unreal is all about pushing and pulling and seeing what the game engine can give you and really force the uh, the look that you're going for. But sometimes uh, ray tracing may not work. But long story short, when it comes to lighting in Unreal and using three point lighting, it's, it's, it's three lights. You, you have a key, you have a fill. So you have your key over here, you have a fill, and then you have a rim light and that's gonna help create that like catch behind. And then you can do all sorts of things to really dress up the look if you wanted. Now, some of the other looks that I did show in Grayscale Gorilla did get a little bit more creative. And I'll show you one more thing uh, because I just can't help myself. My favorite thing to do from one of my favorite photographers, Daniel Norton, is I'll add a spotlight into my uh, image and then I'll hit the W key and just point this at my background and just have it be pointing straight up and we can uh, just kind of position this behind our character maybe increase the brightness a little bit I'll go to my HDRI and set this to a value of 0.1 so it's even darker and I am going to go to my key light and see how much of it is affecting my background a lot so I'm gonna go to my attenuation radius and bring this down so it's just hitting my character, but it's not hitting my background as much. So now with this spotlight, if I drag this into the correct folder, bring my cone angle down, inner cone angle, kind of mess with that and set this to like red, some like dark moody red. And then my, uh, let's see, is it gonna be my fill light? Yeah, we're gonna just bring this down just a little bit in our attenuation radius. So we get this cool looking like red halo around this character, this portrait, etc. So that's a three point lighting tutorial. I hope you learned something. It's three lights and you basically set it up however you want. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, let me know if you if you learned something. Comment section is down there for all of the things. Doing something quick and dirty because I'm in the process of moving right now. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that all the Unreal friends knew about the three-point lighting setup. All right. Take care. Have a wonderful day. And as always, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.